A sane person, after a night of heavy drinking, may result to a bottle of Gatorade or a nice big gallon jug of water to resurrect themselves from their, their long night out with friends celebrating whatever may be happening. That was not always considered the best uh, school of thought, and as such, drinks like today's cocktail, the Corpse Reviver, came to exist. The Corpse Reviver and Hair of the Dog drinks on Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, I am a bartender, I'm currently available for hire for private events and a home mixologist, and today we're going to talk about a pre-prohibition era cocktail that is uh, one of, you know, an example of one of the stupidest things about mixology and one of the funniest things about mixology. <laughs> The words corpse reviver do not actually indicate a single cocktail. In fact, it is a wide ranging number of cocktails, all of which belong to this category of hair of the dog cocktails. It is the hair of the dog that bit you hangover cure. <laughs> now there may or may not be some science behind this, and if I have the gumption to look for it, I'll put it in the you know comments or description down below. But the idea is that you essentially trick your body into no longer having a hangover by continuing to drink, sort of removing your hangover response from your body's physiology and revitalizing yourself by the simple act of only making it worse for you at a later time. <laughs> uh, obviously not the way you would go anymore, but that was the intention behind this sort of class of cocktails. And they've appeared in many different forms over the course of, uh, over the course of I mean, hell, over hundreds of years. Corpse Survivor is a term that was coined in 1871 in the ever-famous Punch magazine, and it then referred to a combination of bitters, brandy, and maraschino, but since then has diversified into an entire classification of cocktails, some of which are called Corpse Survivors. The ones that you are probably most familiar with are those invented by Henry Craddock at the American Bar at the Savoy Hotel, which is ironically in Westminster, London. <laughs> there are uh, a series of them that have come out of that bar in particular, uh, including the Corpse Survivor number one and two, a third one that isn't really, you know, a recognized recipe, and then some that come out of Trader Vic Bergeron's cookbooks and tiki bar out in California, which is a fascinating place to see them get picked up. In general, we're not going to talk about the precursor variations or following variations of the Corpse Survivor uh, outside of the Corpse Survivor number two today because you're really only likely to see that one in particular on any given list. All of the variations that Henry Craddock is credited of inventing in terms of, you know, Corpse Survivors come from around 1930. And in essence, the Corpse Survivor number two is a last word variation that uses an absinthe rin rinse in the glass to give it some additional aromatics and give you something that'll wake you up. Nothing, nothing will wake you up in the morning like a bracing shot of absinthe. It's a delicious cocktail and one that we can get making right now, but first I have to discuss a particular portion of its recipe that has to be modified slightly. Traditional Corp Survivor number twos are made with a French aperitif known as Kina Lillet. Uh, and Lillet is a company that produces vermouth, ap uh, vermouth aperitifs out of France and has been and has done in perpetuity for forever. Uh, but Kina Lillet is no longer on the market. I believe there was a very short revival run that came out probably in the mid 2000s and then went away. As a result, there's not really a direct comparable replacement for it, but what people switched to back in the day was Lille Blanc. Lille Blanc is a uh, Blanc Vermouth aperitif that was invented by Kina, or uh, rather Lille, to not necessarily replace Kina Lille, but as an alternative to Kina Lille. You can make Corpse Forever number two with this, we will be today. It's a perfectly fine option, but most people actually reach for Coqui Americano, which is a different aperitif that I believe comes from the US and is more reminiscent of the flavor profile of Kina. So go for that if you were looking for something more true to the classic form of the cocktail. With all that said, let's go ahead and get working on our Corpse Survivor number two. Now, to start on making our Corpse Survivor number two, we actually have to do a little bit of glass prep. Corpse Survivor is served in a coupe style cocktail glass. I'm gonna get these nice uh, crystal, I, th I think crystal ones. I, don't, I actually don't know, I got them at Goodwill. And we need to do a absinthe rinse in this glass. Now, an absinthe rinse is something we haven't approached before. It's essentially taking a very small amount of absinthe and rolling it around the glass so that it prepares it for whatever cocktail is going to be put into it. It's essentially equivalent, but to a lesser degree of severity, uh, to throwing a dash of absinthe into 
the drink. Not everyone's gonna have absinthe. We'll go over what alternatives you can approach this with, you know, in a little bit here. But if you can, reach for a decent absinthe with really good quality and a lot of very nice complexity. It is going to add a dimension to the cocktail and any cocktail, any other cocktail you like to try it with uh, that I think cannot be understated. We're gonna take this and then just pour a little bit of absinthe into it, just enough to cover the bottom of the glass. You do not need a full pour. We're gonna take that and just roll our glass like this to sort of coat all of the inside of it with that absinthe. And then whatever's left over does get dumped. It does not stay in the cocktail. It will throw off the balance. So just toss the remainder. With our glass prep, we're gonna go ahead and throw that in the fridge. And now we can build our cocktail. Start, I'm gonna just uh, begin with one ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Come behind that with one ounce of Kina Lele or Coqui Americano or Lele Blanc, or uh, I suppose you could use a dry vermouth here, actually. That wouldn't be inappropriate necessarily, or a sweet vermouth if you wanted to switch things up. One ounce of your aperitif. Next up, we need one ounce of an orange liqueur. Uh, most recipes specify Cointreau, but I actually prefer dry Curacao or Grand Marnier here because it'll give it just a little bit of brandy character behind everything, which goes well with all these other flavors we're introducing. And finally, we need one ounce of gin, something that is in the London Dry family, and particularly something with a very sharp uh, juniper and a heavy botanical hand. Um, I don't have any Bombay Sapphire or Beef Eater. I would use either one of those. I'm going to reach for Svedka instead. It's my workhorse gin. It's pretty decent and has a pretty sharp profile to it. That's everything we need for the cocktail, so I'm gonna grab some ice here. With, as with every cocktail, we're gonna do one whole large cube and one cube cracked. I'm gonna cap that up, tap that down, and then shake this for 10 to 12 seconds to combine. We'll pull our glass back up out of the fridge, just let it be chilled with just that absinthe rinse sitting in there. Grab a cocktail strainer and pour that into the glass. To finish this off, the traditional garnish for this is some lemon peel. So I'm gonna take just a ring here, a coin, and express that over the top got a slit in it, and then prop it up on the rim of our glass. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Corpse Survivor number two. Okay, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our Corpse Survivor number two a taste. Cheers. That is, that is truly a pleasantly bracing cocktail, but definitely not what I want to have thrown down my gullet in the morning. <laughs> There's a combination of a very nice interplay of gin botanicals and the complex uh, sort of, I guess I would call them floral and herbal flavors in the uh, vermouth, in, the, in this case, the Kino, uh, Kino excuse me, Lille Le, Le, Le Blanc, Jesus. They're, they're working really well together. They make up the base portion of the flavor. And in fact, actually, the gin is not too intense here. I think it could be a little bit more so. Um, Beef Eater or Tank Ray or Bombay Sapphire would be a better option here than Svetka, that is for sure. Even still, the two of them have this nice interplay that is given a nice citrusy note and nice you know, smooth sweetness from that little bit of uh, orange liqueur we're using. Um, using something like a Cointreau or a Triple Sec is going to be a little bit more dry, actually. A Grand Marnier or a Curacao is going to have a little bit more sweetness to it, but I think it's gonna have a nice more round orange character that is a little bit more subtle. Uh, and as a result, we'll provide you something that's a little bit more nuanced. That one ounce of lemon juice is carrying this through. This drink is exceptionally dry, exceptionally aromatic, uh, and it's really using that citrus to just pow, punch you, and give all of these other more complex flavors a lot of life, and they're really throwing it up in your face and into your nose. It's a really phenomenal, truthfully, if it was a shot, it would be an awesome, awesome shot, actually, if you wanted like a wake up shot, but it's, it's not, it's, 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 a, it's a corpse survivor. <laughs> that, uh, that absinthe, that little bit of absinthe, is giving the whole thing a very light and gentle anise characteristic to it, um, which would be kind of nice if uh, you chose an aperitif to replace Lille Blanc that did have a sort of anisette quality to it. You could kind of embrace that, and I think it would not be unwelcome here, but maybe going for something kind of intense is a bad idea. In any case, the way it's being presented here is giving a nice additional uh, herbal characteristic to the body of the drink and making it very, very much full-bodied and very well-balanced. Um, but not in the way that I generally prefer. I think there's a difference between a cocktail being balanced and in balance. 
to say that something is in balance means that all to me anyway all of the flavors are sort of ubiqu you know, unanimously equal or e equitable fuck what's the word i'm looking for no one flavor stands out from the other they all play together very very well as one cohesive unit and that flavor as a cohesion may or may not have an evolution but it's not necessarily a requirement it's balanced is slightly different to me in the sense that it includes a notion of tension. The flavors are in tension with each other. They pull back and forth and there's dynamics to them and there's an evolution to them. This has some of that going on, but I think it's more from the inherent complexity of our base spirit and our aperitif and the light, you know, orange and brandy smoothness characteristics of the Grand Marnier. It all plays together very well. It's a delicious cocktail and on the palate is very full and nice. Not very rich, but very bright and light and enjoyable. It just doesn't feel, have that kind of tension that I want from something that is so similar to A Last Word, which does have that kind of tension. It's very punchy and in your face and it's pungent and, and, and fascinating and, and lively. Or even A Paper Plane, which is, you know, going the more earthy direction of that, but still has that kind of pulling back and forth, you know? The way a good whiskey sour is like, mm, oh, citrus and sweetness and, and all these flavors of this whiskey, ooh, so good. I wish this had more of that. It does not though. So if you're looking for something that's just approachable and you know, a little bit more complex than your traditional gin sour, I think this is a really fantastic way to go. Uh, don't have it in the morning as a pick-me-up or a wake-me-up after uh, a night of heavy drinking. That is stupid and dangerous, but uh, hey. Now, as far as addressing the notion of I don't have any absinthe in my house, what could I use instead? There are a couple of alternatives I wanted to talk about. If you do not have absinthe in the house, but you do have a decent variety of bitters, or at least, you know, the bitters I would expect anyone who has a decent home bar to have, uh, Angostura, Orange, and Peychaud's, Go ahead and throw a dash of Peychaud's bitters into the cocktail before you shake it. Peychaud's is an herbal bitters, and the vast majority of its profile is made up of anise, that flavor of black licorice, which is very, very similar to absinthe. Obviously, that is going to play with the color of the drink slightly because Peychaud's is a very strong red color, but also it's going to introduce some additional botanicals behind that that are not common in uh, absinthe. If you needed a quick way to fix it, I would say that that's a way to go. If you couldn't find a decent bottle of absinthe, you may or may not be able to find instead a pastiche, which is a liquor made from anise exclusively, whereas absinthe includes wormwood and other, uh, other botanicals. Something fell over in the sink. <laughs> Those, I think, are your best go-to options. I mean, you could also experiment with rinsing the glass with something like Jägermeister, which, again, has additional botanicals behind it, but mostly tastes like black licorice. That's not a bad way to go. I mean, play with it a little bit. There are other ways that you can mess with the cocktail and have it emulate the same thing as before, but with the ingredients you have on hand. Very phenomenal pre prohibitionary cocktail. Maybe not to everybody's palate, but definitely has something for someone who wants something that'll perk up their taste buds a little bit. One last thing before we close this out. Um, there is actually a fun fact about the um, Corpse Survivor number two. The idea is that you are a corpse after a long night of drinking and partying and being out with your friends. The notion is that this wakes you up. But in the original listing for this cocktail in the Savoy cocktail book, there is a uh, sort of flavor text that reads, four of these imbibed in quick succession will once again unrevive the corpse. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, I don't doubt that in the slightest. <laughs> and now with that, we are coming to a close on this episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. We're going to go ahead and do another reading from our book, Crisp Toast, by William Evans and Andrew Frothingham. We are within the section on action. I do not believe we've moved on just yet. We have not. Today's entry reads as such. To quote from the movie, Risky Business, sometimes you just gotta say, what the fuck? That I will motherfucking drink to, holy shit. I work in the medical industry very closely with hospice providers. I say what the fuck on a daily basis, especially when I speak to them. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more episodes of the show. That bell notification, click that. It'll tell you exactly when I upload. <laughs> I upload uh, videos every Friday and sometimes on Tuesdays consistently, and uh, I'm hopeful that you guys will join me uh, next week for next week's episode. My socials are either appearing on the screen now or have been up there for some time. You can follow me there. I use TikTok and Instagram the most, but mostly I'm here on YouTube. So if that's where you are, I'm here too. That said, I bid you all adieu. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Remember to please drink responsibly, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.